Hello again, little year 11 chemistry students. Um, so now I'm going to do a titration with the standard solution that I made earlier, the sodium carbonate, and we're going to titrate brick cleaner. But the brick cleaner is basically made up of hydrochloric acid. I'll show you the container and you need to write down the concentration of HCl in this. So this is the brick cleaner we're using. You can see that is the concentration of hydrochloric acid that it is claiming. Now it's pretty old, so basically we're going to test if that concentration is accurate. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to dilute that because it's very strong and you can't titrate with concentrated acid because it just fumes everywhere and it's unstable. So we're going to dilute it. And to do that really accurately, we need to first weigh the empty standard flask. That's 89.386. 89.386 grams. Then I need to put about 5 mil of this into there. But we're going to use the weight to accurately determine how much it is because this is uh, like a B grade glassware. So even though it says five mil, it's not super accurate. So you can actually see there it's plus or minus 0.2 mil. So we, we need to be more accurate than that. So we're going to use the weight to accurately weigh it. So I'll just do this. So I've got my roughly five mil. And I'm going to pour it in here, and then we're going to get the weight of that. All right, so the 5 mil is in there, and our new weight is 95.592. So we've got the weight of the flask, and then the weight of the flask plus the brick cleaner. So now you can figure out how what is the weight of the um, actual liquid that we added. You can figure that out yourself. Okay, so again, now this had the acid in the bottom. I filled it up a little bit with deionized water and we're giving it a swirl because as I said before you can mix it better when it's not full. So just do that. So I filled it up nearly full, give it another swirl and then I'm gonna fill it up to the line again just like the sodium carbonate. Ta -da! Done. And then once it's full, you invert it a few times, making sure you're holding on to the stopper. And then we're ready to do our titration. Alrighty, so I've got my retort stand set up with my burette holder and my burette. And down here I have a stirrer, magnetic stirrer, which is really cool. It basically, it's not necessary, but it basically means when I'm when I'm um, titrating, usually you have to continually swirl, but with this, I don't need to swirl, so I don't have to worry about human error in that regard. I take this stirrer bead, which is magnetic, put it in my flask, and put it on there, and then when I turn this on, look at that. Can you see how that's spinning? So it mixes it. Now, oops, I'm just going to turn that off because I need to fill all of my flasks. Oh, and also, I'm going to use a white tile underneath so that I can see the colour change clearer. So, I have my four flasks here and these are the four tests. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I have to measure out exactly 20 mil of this diluted brick cleaner or diluted HCl into each of these. And to do that accurately, um, I'm going to use what's called a pipette. This is my pipette filler, so I can suck up the liquid. So I've got my HCl. One last mix. And that goes, and sucking it up. Now, it's always good practice when you're using this kind of equipment to give it a rinse 
with whatever solution you are mixing it with. So I'm just going to tip this out. I have a waste beaker here with me that's labelled waste. Very important to label all your beakers so you don't accidentally use it for something else. So I'm just going to empty this into the waste beaker. All these pipettes have been rinsed, but just in case, in analytical chemistry, we always have to rinse everything we use with the solution that we're going to use it with. Okay, so I've rinsed it. Now I can, I'll just do one of these and then I'll pause it and you don't have to watch. So, if you can see, it's very pale. See that really pale line? I need to get the meniscus just above that. Oh, see, it's, it can be a bit hard. You can overshoot it. So I just keep going past, down, 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 just slightly. There we go. All right. So that's perfectly on the line. And I am pipetting it into my number one flask. You can see all my flasks are labeled as well. One, two, three, four. So I know which run is which. And so when I'm taking down the data, I know which flask it corresponds to. One, two. So it's good practice to hold. It's good practice to hold it right in front of your face so you can really see what you're doing. There we go, perfectly on the meniscus. Into flask two. I used to do a lot of titrations for work. I actually love them. <laughs> it's so satisfying when you get um, concordant results. Okay, that's two. There we go, perfect. Third flask. And final. So I'm just pipetting all these out so I don't have to do it in between each one. I might need to do more than four if I don't get uh, concordant results. But we'll see. Alright. Now when emptying your pipette, it's good to do it on an angle and you slightly touch the pipette onto the glass because it actually pulls it out. See if I don't touch it on there, see it only empties to that much, but if I touch it, it empties that slightly bit more just to get it all out. Now these pipettes are calibrated. So you always have this tiny bit of liquid left in them. That does not matter. They're calibrated to keep that in there. All right, put that aside. Now with titrations, you always use an indicator. If you're not using an indicator, it might be you know, using a pH meter or something. But basically you need to take note of the change in the pH because that's what you're titrating. So we've got Got our HCl or our brick cleaner in these flasks. And then I'm gonna put my standard solution of sodium carbonate, which is base or alkaline, in the burette. So we've got our acid in the flasks and the base in the burette. And when we put the acid into the base, it's gonna neutralize it. And when it gets to this equilibrium, we're gonna see a color change. So we're gonna use methyl orange because it has the right range. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to put a squirt in each. So there we can see they all look like a beautiful, beautiful red. I'm just going to put them aside and I'm going to fill up my burette. So instead of filling it up straight from this flask in here, it can be a bit tricky. So I'm going to pour it into a beaker and then use the beaker spout to pour it in here. If you were doing this, you would use a funnel up the top. But as I said, because I've been doing titrations for decades, I've got good pouring skills, so I don't need a funnel. But I'm labeling this as sodium carbonate. I don't know if you can see that, but it's labeled so I don't accidentally mix it up with my waste beaker. Now again, before we fill it, give it another mix. 
And because I'm going to use this for the whole time to fill up sodium carbonate, I just want to give it a rinse with the sodium carbonate. So remember, analytical chemistry, we rinse all of the glassware with the thing that we're using, we're going to use it with. Okay, so that's been rinsed. Now I'm going to fill it up. And fill up my burette. Oh, I left it open. Classic mistake. Now, same as what I've said with everything, we're using this burette to measure the, or to hold the sodium carbonate. So again, we want to rinse it with that sodium carbonate. Rinse, rinse, rinse. So that's gone all the way up. And then I'm going to, I'm going to empty this bit that I've put in there into my waste beaker because this is our rinse. We don't want to use this one. So that's just emptying in there. Once it's emptied, I will fill it up again and we can start our titration. So closing it, filling it from the top. Okay, now I just want to show you. So you can see the top of this, there it is, and that's where I filled it to. Now I always like to overfill it because then I empty it until it gets to the zero. Now you don't have to put it on the zero. You can just put it any, like fill it up to anywhere and just write down where you start and where you finish and then you can calculate the mills. But I just always like to fill it up to exactly zero because it's just easier to tell where we're at. So I'll put that back in. And I'm gonna, it's good to have, you might have to stand on tippy toes, but you want to kind of get your eye level with the zero. Now I'm going to let it out until it gets to exactly zero. Okay, perfect. So this is at zero, now we're ready to go. Let's start with number one. So I've got my little stirrer bead in there that's going to spin. Put it on there, turn this on. I'm just trying to move it around so it's quiet. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's going to be noisy. All right. So here we have it spinning away. And we're starting at zero mil. Now let's go. We're just going to let it go until we see a color change. Now the first one is always kind of, you might overshoot it because we have no idea whether um, how many mils we need to add yet. But after you've done one, then you get a rough idea of how many mils it takes. Oh, do you see that? So that's the color change. Now let's look at how many. So that was 18.6 mil. 18.6 mil. So you need to write down all of these results and then you can calculate the actual concentration of this brick cleaner. All right, so now we're gonna do number two. So again, I have just filled up the burette with sodium carbonate solution. My, got my waste beaker. It's gonna empty it. Oh, can't really see that, it's a bit low, a bit high. Empty it till we get to one, or zero rather. Okay, great. Now, I reckon we overshot number one because I had it just pouring out really fast. So uh, that was 18.6 mil. So once I get to like 17 mil this time, I'm gonna slow it right down and just uh, let the burette drip slowly. And we'll see if we get uh, a lower result. All right, turning on my spinner and I'll bring it over here so you can watch. All right, number two. So again, I'm just gonna let it run until we get down to about 17. Okay, so it's about 17. Last time we got 18.6. 
Let's see if we can get it more accurate. It still hasn't changed color yet. You can see it's the same color as those ones. But see, if I only turn, if I turn this burette just slightly, I can get it dripping. Can you see that? How it's dripping? So I reckon we're gonna catch the end point much more accurately with it just dripping in. So as soon as it turns orange, I'm gonna stop. And also this orange stuff on the outside is just indicator, so you don't have to worry about that not being in the solution. Oh, I can see it changing. Nearly. All right, we're at 18 mil now. Let's see if we can catch it. Dripping. Well, maybe we did catch it pretty spot on. Oh, I think that's a bit of change. One more drop. There we go. Did you see that? So that... Ooh, 18.5. <laughs> so it was a little bit faster. So you can see the difference in color. So this one is more orange and that one is red. It's easy to see in, uh, in person. All right, number three. Oh, actually, so let's write that down. So number two is 18.5 mil. Well, that's pretty damn concordant. Let's do number three. Number three, so I'm gonna fill my burette up again with sodium carbonate. Overshot it just a little bit, get my waste beaker. Get it down to zero. Okay, and I've got a magnet here to get out the sterabe. See that? So I'm just gonna give that a rinse into my waste beaker because we don't want to add any acid to that trial. Okay. Number three. Do you think we're going to get 18.5 again? And it's off. All right, I'm going to stop it at 18 this time. And then we'll let it do drip wise. Okay. It's at 18. Can you see that's already kind of slightly changed color? Just slightly. All right, so now I'm gonna just turn this only a tiny bit so we can just get drops. Oh, there we go. Dripping. Okay, I feel like, whoa, there it is, there it is, there it is. So that has gone orange. Can you see the difference? This one is our flask four that hasn't been titrated yet. You can see that is, that's more red and that's more orange. All right, calm down, mate, calm down. So what did we get for the third titer? Oh my God, look how accurate that is. I reckon that's like 18 point, that looks like 18.6 again, okay. And let's do the fourth one. So when you turn that straight on, it just comes pouring out. But if you turn it half on, you can get your drops. There's a drop. Okay. So let's just watch this until it has that proper orange change. There. There we go. So that's our third one. You know what, I actually think, so the second one is the one that we got 18.5 for. But if you, can, if you can see that, it actually looks like that is a little bit darker. So I think that these two 
and number one, which I accidentally threw out, are more accurate. Can you see how that, that still looks a bit red. So I reckon 18.5 is actually, or well 18.6 is actually the perfect amount. Let's see if this one is, dum 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 dum. Ooh, a little bit over. So that's like 18.65. And then we want the average, which is 18.59. So that's your tighter. And with all of those results, you should be able to figure out what the actual concentration of this is. Good luck with your calculations. I hope you enjoyed that titration as much as I did.